Hey everybody, welcome to Luna Celine Creations. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this pretty little Christmas tree or evergreen tree wine glass. Um, you can use them for Christmas time or for any time during the winter season. There's a little bit of glitter on the base. That always looks pretty good. We like glitter. There's some dotting like a border under the uh, white under the snowbank. And uh, these are pretty simple to do guys. Um, they're great for giving as gifts or to keep for yourself or you can even sell them. Let's dive in. Okay, so we have our stemmed white wine glass here and I've already cleaned it with rubbing alcohol. You always want to clean your glasses first before applying your enamel paints or any kind of paint so that the paint will adhere better to it, um, getting rid of any residue that might be on the glass from washing or oil from your hands. You, uh, you really have to do that first before you start. Easy peasy. So we're going to use enamel paint today. Um, I'm using the uh, multi-surface this is from folk art you can also use glossy enamels this one's from deco art uh, americana brand as long as it's a paint that's made to go on multi-surface or glass okay you're good to go uh, you can start at about a half an inch to an inch from the top of the glass and you're going to go in with your white paint i'm using a liner brush here and you're going to make small strokes it's starting the top of your evergreen tree okay as you go down widen a little bit of course you're going for this triangle shape but it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle because as in nature you know trees aren't perfectly triangular and you're going to wisp out at the edges. Get that tippy tippy top quite pointy. I like to have mine pretty pointy. And then again, go down one side. And then the other. And all these small lines and brush strokes from the liner brush that's going to look like your branches and your needles of your evergreen tree. And then again, on the other side, widen as you go down. Try to do a little curl if you can. And then we go in and we do the bottom. Again, with the little wisps. Just take your time. Now, I say take your time, but this paint dries fairly quickly. So you do have to work in a timely manner. And then you're going to go in and start filling in your tree. Wipe off the excess paint as you go. You can use a little paper towel or just on your palette like I'm using a really fancy palette here you can see it's just a piece of tin foil folded <laughs> you can use a uh, plastic plate or the lid off of an old margarine tub whatever you have we're not fancy here guys okay and then you just keep going down the tree and fill in your branches Now, if this is your first time trying something like this, you know, it's a learning process. So don't expect anything to be perfect. Um, the first ones you do, you might just keep for yourself. I have a lot of prototypes hanging around in my uh, kitchen cupboard that are glasses that didn't turn out so wonderfully. But if you're doing it just as a hobby or just to learn, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. 
and practicing is how we learn and how we improve on our skills, right? So then once you get your tree pretty much filled in and you think you like the look of it, then you're going to move on to the next step. You can go in and fill in any any space you think looks a little bit bare or if you want it to have a little more texture you can go in and do that now I like to do these little wispy edges going down the side of the tree I think it looks pretty and very organic looking and again, just go in very lightly with your liner brush. You don't want a lot of paint on it at this point because you just want it to have that really wispy look. And once you're satisfied with how that looks, I can move on to the next step. If you're doing a set of wine glasses, take the other glass you have and uh, make sure they're a similar height and similar width. They don't have to be perfectly the same, of course, because this is not a cookie cutter thing. Every glass is unique, but just make sure they're similar. So I did the trunk off camera. So just add a little rectangle for the trunk there. I just realized that as I was doing my voiceover. So I'm using a little pouncer tool here, a sponge applicator. Um, I cut a piece of this one away, a couple pieces away, so I could really get in at an angle and do that part that's going to be the snowbank under the tree. So we uh, shake our paint and you want to make sure you get a, a good amount of paint on the sponge to start with and then sort of dab off the excess. You'll get a feel as you're going, um, you know, as to how much paint you need to put on. You want it to be fairly thick. Um, now you can go right under the trunk and start. Keep it as straight as you can. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because in nature, things aren't perfectly straight as a snowbank, right? And the sponge, you can even actually go in uh, and make it um, sort of wavy around the back if you want to. And that looks good too. Um, like a rolling snowbank, uh, go around the back and dabbing, dabbing, dabbing as you go. Now I do like this sponge applicator because it's not a perfectly crisp line. Uh, it has a little bit of a snow spray look at the edge, like the snow is blowing around. So I just sped that up a little bit to, to show you uh, quickly fill in that snowbank. And then you move on to the base. You're going to be doing the top of the base of the glass. I'm holding it up at an angle so you guys can see the paint going on. Now, ideally, you want to put it down on your surface like so. And again, just going in with the pouncer, trying to keep the paint fairly even. Now, for this uh, tutorial, I'm just doing one coat to show you guys basically the process. But if you would like, and I would kind of recommend it because that way your first coat doesn't have to be perfect, is to do two coats. So you would do the tree and then the snowbank and then the base and then set it aside for a, an hour or so. And uh, then come back and do a second coat, okay? Now for the dotting, you can use a crocheting dotting tool that one's like a 4.5 mil but for this project um, I decided to use the end of a paintbrush instead because I want it to be a nice circular dot and I'm going to put that right on the bottom edge of my snowbank. Now I'm being very careful here not to touch the snowbank or the base because it's still wet. If you were gonna do this in two, uh, two steps and let it dry in between, you know, you don't have to be as careful, <laughs> obviously, if your paint's dry. So you just go around and make a circle of dots. 
okay? And that's kind of what it's going to look like when it's done. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, again. But just do the best you can to keep it straight, okay? The next thing we're going to do is go in and do a similar row of dots on the top of the base. Get a fair amount of paint on your dotting tool or your end of your paintbrush and just try to do one to two touches and go around. And you want to overlap the dot with that top line. If any little smudges or splatters get on that uh, stem or anywhere else on the glass, don't worry because you can clean that later with the acetone nail polish remover and it comes right off. Next step is the glitter. And who doesn't love a little glitter? Now you can skip the glitter if you don't like, but I use this uh, brand of craft glitter I got on Amazon. This is not a sponsored video by any means. You can use any type of craft glitter, glitter that you have. Uh, you, I'm using just iridescent. Um, you can use white, silver, red, green, you know, the sky's the limit, it's up to you. Whatever kind of glitter you want. Take a little bit in your hand if you don't have a shaker, I didn't. And you're just gonna rub it really, really gently between your thumb and your forefinger and your second finger, kind of like you're rubbing herbs. You know, you want it to really go on lightly. You can always add more. You can't necessarily take it away once it's stuck on there. Now you want your paint to be wet when you're adding the glitter. So if you're doing this in one step, now you know you have to work quickly and get that glitter on. If you're doing it in two steps where you're doing two coats, then obviously you go in right after you do the second coat. Okay, and it's gonna look nice and sparkly, just kind of like how the, the sun will catch on uh, fresh snow and have that nice sparkle. And it's kind of magical for Christmas. Now you can add it to the snowbank as well, the glitter. For mine, I just did the bottom. Now you're gonna have glitter everywhere. So get that glitter off you as best you can. You can blow off the excess. Sometimes I do it over a sink <laughs> or over a plate to save my extra glitter. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and make our dots. Our silver sparkles. Again, that's the folk art chunky silver multi-surface paint that I'm using. You could do gold, you could do green, you could do blue, red, whatever you like. Okay, but for this demonstration, I'm using the silver, which I really think is pretty and elegant looking and just simple. Again, I'm using the end of my paintbrush to go in and go in with a little bit of silver. You can do a star shape on the top if you want. Now when this paint dries, it's sort of semi-transparent. The glitter shows through, but the paint, it's, it's not solid. You know what I'm saying? So for these, I just did uh, a simple circle on the top, like a ball. And then you're gonna go in and very easy guys, just make dots, go in back to the paint, do two or three dots at a time Try to make them different sizes for some variety. And they just look really pretty. Go all the way down. Don't forget the edges. Uh, you can go across and make it look like a, a garland if you wanted to do lines instead of random polka dots. For me, these just remind me of just a, a white Christmas tree with silver ornaments and just very simple and very pretty. And when you're done your glass, you are gonna bake these in an oven, guys, at a cold oven at 350. And I'll leave instructions in the description box below. Okay, now set it aside. Just leave it alone for a little while. Come back to it the next day. If you want to do any touching up on it or anything like that, 
clean up any little splotches or smudges that you may have gotten, okay? And you can clean that all up the next day. I just use a nail polish remover, acetone type, uh, on a Q-tip. So you've got your pretty little pine tree here with your silver sparkles, your crisp white snowbank, and your glitter base. Uh, some people like to do the whole stem in white, but I prefer to leave mine plain with just the row of dots. I think, I think it looks really nice just like that. And then you're grabbing that part of the glass when you're drinking all the time. Of course, sprinkle glitter and your polka dot ornaments, as many or as few as you'd like. Uh, you are going to bake this in a cold oven. Like I said, I will put that uh, instructions for that in the description box, okay? That way you can hand wash it and uh, your paint will last a long time. You can enjoy your glasses for many years to come. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up here now. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're interested in seeing more glass painting tutorials, please consider liking, subscribing, and uh, hitting that notification bell. All right. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.